All right, I'm going to show you how to program this QIT KT-8900 for a repeater. Most of it is pretty straightforward, and you can figure it out from the manual. But the very last step, <laughs> they don't tell you in the manual, and if you don't know it, it will pull your hair out. So here we go. All right, so the first thing we need to do is pick the receive frequency of the repeater and we're going to make sure we're in VFO mode so the channel numbers have went away there and I'm going to punch in here 4 4 3 1 5 0 happens to be one of my favorite repeaters Okay, so that puts us on the VFO frequency. So now what we have to do is type in the CTCSS tone on the transmit side. I typically don't put one on the receive side, only on the transmit side. So the process for that is using this function button. And then you go 113 on the keypad. See, transmit CTCS. And then function again puts you into the CTCSS mode and actually 110.9 is what I want but you can type it in here 1109 110.9 and then you have to hit function again that stores it and then usually I'll go ahead and on the, hit the exit button just to exit out okay now we have to put in the shift direction in other words, are we transmitting above the receive frequency or below the receive frequency? <clears throat> In this case, we're going to be transmitting above the receive frequency. So we hit the function button. And we put in 38. That goes to our shift diff. And function again puts us where we can change it. And you can use the knob if you choose. Or you can use the up-down buttons on here so I'm going to leave it at plus F again saves it and I exit out so I'm going to set the receive frequency I've set the tone I've set the shift diff now I gotta set how much differential believe it or not this doesn't have auto you have to tell it so for that we do F 39 F and 0.6 is used typically for VHF and we're on a UHF frequency so I need to type in 0, 0.5 0, 0, 0. F again saves it and then exit okay so now we have the receive frequency, the tone, which direction the shift is, the uh, value of the shift, and now we're going to save it into a channel location. So for that we go F36, you see channel 1, but that's not where I want to save it, but I hit F again, now I can change this, and this one I want to put on 33. Okay, and I get 33 and I hit exit. All right. Now, here's the kicker. Under normal, normal circumstances, you would think that would be sufficient. You've put in a tone, you've put in the direction of the shift, you've put in the, the amount of the shift, you've saved it to a memory channel. That should be enough. Unfortunately, if you stop there, you will pull your hair out for the rest of your life. There's one more step you have to do. It is not intuitive, and it's not in the manual. Let's go back, make sure we're in our VFO mode. And we said our shift was positive 5. So you have to manually calculate that. 
And if I'm at 443,150, adding to that is going to be 448,150. So let me go to 448,150. Okay, 448,150. And now I have to resave the memory channel. So function, that's the one I want. Or you can type in 36. I'll go ahead and type it in 36. Hit function again. And function again. And exit. Now at that point we have actually saved channel 36. And uh, this is N5PMB is the uh, channel name on that. I'll show you how to change the channel name here in just a minute. But let's see if we can kerchunk that repeater. So down here I'm going to take it out of VFO mode, put it in channel mode. You can see right there i got channel 1 and channel 74 up here. So I'm just going to run this. There it is. 33. And let's just see what I got. AF5DN. Any of my ham buddies on frequency this evening? Well, that might be a typical response. <laughs> the uh, my ham buddies uh, may not be on the channel free channel uh, Saturday afternoon. They're probably off busy living their lives. But we were able to kerchunk the repeater and hear the tone, so we know that's all been programmed correctly. All right, so the next step is let me show you how to program a name. Okay, so we want to program a name onto this frequency. Now, you can't be in the VFO mode. See, in the VFO mode, the channels disappear. You have to be in memory mode or channel mode. So you see. 33 right there and the arrow is pointing to that frequency so that's the one I'm going to give a name to so to give it a name you go function it happens to already be there but it's 28 sorry about that bad timing <laughs> and then we do function and now we see these are flashing and you can turn the little dial and pick your frequency. So I'm going to go in. Okay, now here's the trick, and this does not tell you this in the manual. To get to the next number, you have to press this number slash lock over here. And now you can see I'm moving it. Now for the, the numbers, you can use the keypad. So this is going to be N5 PMB, so there's N5. And again, number lock. And then I want P. Look there, it went too far, didn't it? Number, number, number. And five. Nobody said this was easy. And five. P. And. M. Now I'm just going to go around just to show you all the last ones, all the numbers that are on here. Hopefully you can see that. These are all capitals. Here's some, uh, I don't know what you want to call them, uh, special characters. And then numbers. Some more special characters. And then you get lowercase. So I'm going to go N5 PM N5 PMB and that's what I want. I'm going to go over here the next and function to save it and exit over here. Alright so to, I'm going to run through this real quick to put this in to channel A into um, 
uh, where you can see the channel name. I'm just going to run through these here real quick. And the, these are very similar um, menu channels, uh, menu options to what you see on the handhelds like the Beofang and the, the Puxon and the Oson. These are very, very similar functions. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to find, here we go, here we go, channel A, I'm in frequency mode, I want to go frequency, name mode, function, and escape. And now you can see up here on channel 33 I'm actually showing the name N5PMB. Alright, so that's it. That's how you program a repeater into the QT, uh, QYT KT8900. It's not difficult. You just got to have the right steps and be able to uh, interpret the Chinglish manual. <laughs> that's it for this video. Thanks for watching AF5DN.